Hey Internet, welcome back to the Easy Riding Channel. My name is Zach. And I'm Emma. So Emma, we've discussed it before and people may have noticed your helmet looks different than mine. That's because I wear an ADV or adventure style helmet. It's a, a dirt bike helmet, essentially. Why do you wear a ADV helmet? Um, I have PTSD. That stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. And this is the only style of full face helmet that I found that I can wear. It doesn't cause the amount of discomfort or uh, panic that regular street type helmets do. So what is PTSD? The American Psychiatric Association defines PTSD as a psychiatric disorder that may occur in people who have experienced or witnessed a traumatic event, a series of events, or a set of circumstances. You've probably heard of this disorder being most commonly linked with the military and military personnel, but it's not exclusive to military. Civilians can also be diagnosed with PTSD as well. PTSD is different for different people. You can have similar symptoms, but triggers and responses will likely vary between people. I was diagnosed with PTSD whenever I was 18. The environment that I grew up in was a very traumatic environment and I left that environment when I turned 18 and I moved in or kind of was adopted by a family from our church. Uh, we've talked about them before, Papa Bear and his wife and, and daughters. He's who I got Opal, our gold wing from. His family kind of adopted me and basically said, you're one of ours now. So, so why does an ADV helmet help you as opposed to a standard helmet? So one of the aspects of PTSD is it has different triggers or you can get triggered by different scenarios or episodes. Somebody who's been in a flood might not want to go near deep water. Somebody who's, I don't know, been in a car accident might have trouble getting back into a car. One of my specific triggers is having my mouth and nose covered and having pressure put on my face and feeling the hot breath that you breathe out coming back on me. And this helmet style, this ADV helmet, helps to mitigate that stress and helps it to not trigger me as often or as badly. Unlike a regular street full face helmet, mine basically has more room in it. It doesn't sit close up to my face because it has a longer, lower mandible jaw area and I have a large vent right in front of my mouth that allows for a lot of extra air flow. So I can't always feel my breath coming back at me. So Emma braved a standard full face helmet for a very short period of time so we could get this clip and show you uh, the difference of them on her face. So how did you figure out that an ADV helmet was gonna work for you? Through lots of trial and error. And I'm sure we scared any number of random employees in different shops as I tried on helmets. Pretty much all of my riding experience, I've always ridden with a three-quarter helmet. Last year on Opal, our Goldwing, we had a mechanical malfunction that led to an accident and a lot of my gear got damaged. Whenever we started looking for replacement gear for me, Zach felt really strongly that we needed to try to find me a full face helmet. And I reminded him that uh, I can't wear a full face helmet. <laughs> but I was willing to try. So we went to several different stores and we tried on so many different helmets. Let me make a point to say that if you are a person working in a motorcycle shop, I understand that your job is to help people who are new to motorcycling figure out how to size and fit a helmet to your person, but if you have a person that says, I am an experienced rider, I can put my helmet on by myself, I don't like to be touched, so please don't touch me, and I have PTSD, so let me do this by myself, please do not try to put the helmet on that person and also do not put down the visor before that person is ready we had that happen a couple of times and we were done helmet shopping on those days yes we almost got a helmet called the bell bruiser and it has a removable 
lower mandible. But the temptation would have been that I would have just worn it as a three-quarter helmet instead of a full-face helmet. And that kind of defeated the purpose of getting a full-face helmet. So after we went to lots of different shops, we couldn't find a helmet. I was getting pretty discouraged at that point and wanted to give up. But I also didn't want to give up because I worked really hard to not let my PTSD rule me and, and take over my day. And I knew that if I kept looking, that a solution would show up. And I'm the kind of person that likes to do research. I was thinking about it and thinking about the fact that what do people with claustrophobia do who want to wear full face helmets? So I looked it up. A couple of the solutions weren't very helpful. First one being just suck it up. That's not a helpful solution for somebody with PTSD. There are circumstances where you can just suck it up, put on your big girl panties and move on with life or do something that's hard, just get it done. But when it comes to working through triggers and working through potential circumstances or problems, sucking it up is not something that works very well. And it's not very good advice in general. Another solution or option was to just wear the three-quarter helmet, which again wasn't something that I wanted to do. Lastly, somebody on one of those boards said trying a ADV or full face helmet to try a dirt bike helmet. Now, I had never even contemplated looking at dirt bike helmets because I don't wear, I don't dirt bike. I don't do off-roading adventure style riding. When we were looking around, I found the helmet that I currently wear, which is the LS2 Blaze. I tried it on and decided that it would take some getting used to, but that it could work. So then, your PTSD is gone, right? You're cured, you got the helmet, it fixed everything. Having this helmet just kind of helped with one aspect of my PTSD. So being triggered from having my mouth and nose covered or feeling the hot breath coming back at me. Uh, this isn't a perfect solution, but this helmet helps. And I can still get triggered and I have been triggered by this helmet. It's a, it's a lot of trial and error sometimes. We were literally getting ready for this ride and I went to put on my helmet and the, the very fluffy dead cat inside my helmet fell out. And I try really hard not to pay attention to that fluffy thing inside my helmet. Zach had to help me work through that and put it back together. <laughs> it's been interesting because of your unique PTSD triggers to try and figure out a way that we can record these videos, videos and how we can even talk to each other with the comms units. Having that extra stuff in the front of her helmet has been a challenge and finding um, parts and pieces that are a solution to that challenge has been a bit of a bit of a work to, to get done. We've tried a number of different products, a number of different solutions. We finally settled on one that looks like it's doing the trick. And like we figured out that on hot days, I, I can't really ride with this helmet. And it's not necessarily because I can feel my hot breath coming back at me. It's because the Arizona air is hot. The, the air itself is hot and that filtering through the vent in front of my helmet set me off. So we're out on a ride and you do panic. Uh, something does trigger you. What happens? What do we do? The first thing to do is that I talk to Zach and I let him know that, hey, I'm having a problem. There's too much traffic around or I'm too hot or uh, something is, has set me off. Sometimes it can go from zero to 100. You're suddenly in a panic attack or a flashback or you don't know where you are or what's going on, but it's not always like that. It's more of a sliding scale. So I have a scale and it goes from zero to 10 and 10 being I'm in blind panic and I'm no longer here. Zero being everything is perfectly normal. So a immediate zero to 10, it, it can gradually change and get worse. I have a lot of uh, coping mechanisms and tools that I can use. I've been to lots of counseling and I've worked with lots of different people in my life to figure out what to do in those situations where I do panic. Sometimes they help and sometimes they don't. <laughs> but the first thing is to talk to Zach since he's the driver and he needs to know what's going on with his pillion. Some of the things that I do, especially with this helmet, is I keep the face shield really super clean because if there's anything impeding my field of vision, it can cause problems and it can set me off. Whenever we come to stops at stoplights, if we're stopped for more than a couple of seconds, I have to lift the face shield up so that I'm getting regular air circulating and not just my own air circulating in the helmet. And, and when Emma does communicate with me that she's starting to have an issue, we'll 
I'll either, depending on what the circumstance calls for, I'll start writing much more sedately, or I'll pull over and give her a minute to collect herself if she needs. It all depends on what the circumstance calls for. Maybe it's just that a big rig on the freeway is giving her an issue and I just need to get away from that. It could be any number of things, and so the solution to those problems varies from moment to moment. And I have to give myself grace. PTSD is my reality, and it's something that I have to learn to live with and to cope with, and uh, because it's not going to go away for me. I have heard of some instances where people with PTSD have been able to recover fully uh, from it, but that's not my reality. Why I would say I that's also not most people's reality. I think the vast majority of people who suffer from PTSD are not one day free of it. But I yeah. think it's something that, at, it's the same way an alcoholic has to live with the reality of having been an alcoholic. You are in that state for the rest of your life. You struggle with that for the rest of your life. Yes, the struggles become easier because you learn how to deal with it, but that doesn't mean that you would it consider yourself cured. Yeah, exactly. So on bad days, it's important to remember that it's okay if I don't want to ride that day. It takes a lot of brain power to get on a motorcycle. It's not like just getting in a car and sitting in a cage and and just letting the world pass you by. You are an active participant in your ride, even being pillion, you know. Zach has to watch out for all kinds of things and happenstances and road conditions and people and all kinds of stuff. I have to consider every time I go out or even with most things during the day, if I'm able to put myself in a situation that I know might cause a reaction, am I capable of doing that? All right, Emma, so what's the moral of our story here? I think the, the basic thing to remember is don't give up and uh, think outside the box and uh, find your support system. We knew we wanted me to try to find a full face helmet. We knew there were gonna be challenges with that, but we didn't give up and we found a solution that was kind of outside the box. And having Zach and my friends and other family members as a support system is huge. Point in case today with the microphone, falling out of my helmet and me getting stuck on it and Zach was there to help me and I'm so very thankful and so very blessed to have him in my life and to have his family and our friends that that understand my PTSD and um, how to help me be successful. As Shade Tree says, given enough time success is inevitable or something along those lines. <laughs> And another way to say it is you only fail when you quit. I hope that this will, will encourage those of you who do have PTSD to continue to keep working at it, to strive to find solutions for yourself. And for those of you who don't have PTSD, that it will help you to extend some grace to those who do. Yeah, and if you are having trouble with claustrophobia or with wearing a full face helmet, then maybe look into dirt bike style helmets. Uh, so I hope you guys found that informative, entertaining, some combination of the two. I hope you'll understand that you don't have any clue what somebody's going through, what they're, where they're at in their day, in their life, uh, and extend people grace. Um, and thank you for a beautiful ride.